Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, do subliminal messages affect human behavior? Now, to understand this issue, we need to understand the theory of the conscious mind. So if we look at psychodynamic theory, for example, we have the mind divided into the conscious, the subconscious, and the unconscious. So the conscious mind contains what we're aware of right now. The subconscious mind contains information that we could be aware of. It's readily available. And the unconscious mind contains information that we can't get to. Although the theory is that information stored in the unconscious mind can influence our behavior. So when it comes to the word subliminal, what this really means is below the threshold to be detected by the conscious mind. So it's below what's called the absolute threshold level. So these are typically visual or auditory messages that are presented in a way, like flashed quickly on a screen, that they're below the absolute threshold level. That's subliminal. And the idea here is that the subconscious picks up this stimulus and it influences human behavior. So it's not consciously detected, it can't be by definition, but the subconscious takes this information, it processes it, and we still act on it in some way. There's still a human behavior associated with it. Now there's also something called supraliminal. And supraliminal messages are messages that we can detect. They're above the absolute threshold level. We can detect them with our conscious mind. Now, what's interesting about superliminal is it doesn't speak to priority, meaning if there's a superliminal message in our environment, we can detect it with our conscious mind. We're aware of it, but we don't necessarily prioritize it. It can still be in the background. We can store a lot of information in our conscious awareness. So when we talk about this issue of subliminal messages, I think what gets confused here is sometimes we're really talking about supraliminal messages. So let's look at an example from a study. There was a study about wine sales done in the UK. And there were German and French wines that were for sale in the store. Now the price of these wines were the same. And on one day they would play German music in the store and another day French music. And what they found is that on days when they played German music, above 70% of the wine purchased was the German wine. And the same thing for the French music and the French wine, the same effect. Now this was touted by some as proof that subliminal messages really work. They really influence human behavior. But when we're talking about music in the background in a store, we're really talking about supra liminal messages. Yes, a lot of the people that purchase wine, most of the people that purchase the wine, who answer the survey after the wine purchase, indicated the music didn't influence their selection. So there was this idea that it was in the background, but it was still super liminal. They could still hear it. They just didn't prioritize it. They were paying attention to the wine or other elements of the environment or other cognitive processes and not the background music. So they may not have pushed it as a priority in terms of what they were thinking about, but it was superliminal. So when we talk about true subliminal messages, a lot of times we are talking about words on a screen that flash really quickly. And when I say quickly, I mean quite quickly, around 0 0.003 seconds. That's the duration of a word flashing on a screen that's typically agreed upon as being subliminal. So that's three one thousandths of a second. Now there are some studies that show that subliminal messages as opposed to superliminal, we know superliminal messages do tend to affect behavior, but subliminal messages affect behavior as well. Now generally there hasn't been a strong effect identified here meaning the effect size is small. These aren't important changes that we're seeing based on subliminal messages. And many people believe, of course, that there's no effect of subliminal messages. 
meaning that we have seen some studies that show an effect, but the research methodology there wasn't solid, or random error produced those results, or what we're measuring isn't correct. There's a lot of measurement errors that are theorized in terms of some of these studies. So what's the truth? Well, we don't really know. It doesn't appear that subliminal messaging has an effect on human behavior, or if it does, it seems like it's a small effect. I think that the issues that are brought up with some of these studies that show an effect seem fairly legitimate. A lot of these studies confuse subliminal with superliminal. There are a few studies, a lot of times the sample sizes are small, and there appears to be questionable methodology and unclear measurement involved in a lot of these studies. Still, there are a number of studies that show that subliminal messaging has some effect. So should we be worried about this? Well, the short answer is probably not. If you look at the effect that subliminal messaging has on making purchases, we know this is either non-existent or relatively small. The other side of this issue with subliminal messaging, however, is there's a whole industry built around subliminal messaging. There are products available that contain subliminal messages that purport to affect someone's ability to lose weight, to stop smoking, to alleviate physical symptoms like pain to be more effective in career goals and to increase self-esteem. The problem is that, again, the effect size that we've seen when these issues have been studied is non-existent or extremely small. So it doesn't appear that subliminal messaging is effective in selling products or in self-help. I hope you found this description of subliminal messages to be interesting. Thanks for watching.